what do we make of C.J. Stroud? Because we have seen this before mm -hmm. where it's not the same for all young quarterbacks. Some quarterbacks go to terrible franchises, and it's really hard for them to succeed. Yeah. And then other quarterbacks go further down in the draft. They get to wait behind an entrenched starter. They get to learn from the veteran, and maybe things go a little bit better for them. Do we think that C.J. Stroud – uh, has what it takes to stick around in the NFL? Because I think that's the question mark. It's just, it's very hard for any quarterback, any young quarterback yeah. to come to the league and immediately be good. Do you think he can stick around? Because they have a lot of money invested in him. I'll say that. They do. So maybe they should give him a shot. I I think so. I love C.J. Stroud at Ohio State. And I guarantee you, I'm going to call it right now. You know how players do this. I guarantee you He's going to say something about having a chip on his shoulder or about the haters because during or right before the NFL draft, you know how this is. There were all these question marks suddenly surrounding C.J. Stroud. I think he said something at the time. And what I love about Lovey Smith, by the way, before they let him go one and done, is that the Texans could have had the number one pick in the NFL draft, but – they beat the Colts in the final game of the regular season, which was almost like Lovey Smith's middle finger to the franchise. Like, you know what? I know you hired me and you're going to fire me. I'm going to beat the Colts so that you drop down to number two. But I, I, I do like that they went after C.J. Stroud. Now, they also got Will Anderson Jr., which you mentioned earlier. The question is, did they give up too much for him? Give up a first, a second, and a third rounder. That is a lot to move up, what, you know, six, seven spots, whatever it was. So I think these are great draft picks. I love the talent. And Stroud in particular is a guy who you're going to need to give him time just because sometimes you're only as good as the weapons around you. And the top three receivers from last season are not on the team. Brandon Cooks, gone, went to the Cowboys. Chris Moore is gone. Jordan Aikens is gone. So they signed Robert Woods from your Titans. John Mechie yes. III should be back. Drafted, I know, drafted in the second round last year, but didn't play last season because he was diagnosed with leukemia. Going to be good to have him back. He is very talented. They signed Dalton Schultz from the Cowboys. So not great weapons around C.J. Stroud. So they're going to need to give him a little more time than some quarterbacks in the league just by virtue of the fact that who, who they're going to throw to. I feel like I'm at like a parent teacher conference and you're searching for something nice to say about the kid and you just can't think of anything. You're like, well, <laughs> you know, they sit there quietly while we do mm -hmm. the morning announcements. You know, they're really mm -hmm. good at that. We were talking about D'Amico Ryans and how important was this hire for the Texans franchise? Because I'm not trying to stomp on the Texans, but this wasn't exactly the most desirable job in the offseason. And D'Amico said, look, I was a part of this organization. This is where I want to be. Stability-wise, that had to be huge. You mentioned stability. Let's put it very bluntly. This, this organization was a joke. And, yeah. and I'm, you know, I've been here forever. Uh, from the whole Jack Easterby stuff to the Deshaun Watson stuff to – uh, you know, just uh, empty suits that were, were named as head coach, like David Culley and then Lovey Smith. I mean, it was a punchline. It was an absolute punchline. So how important was it? Everything has changed overnight. Everything changed mm -hmm. the night uh, that the news broke that D'Amico was hired. And it's only gotten better since because of the draft with C.J. Stroud and uh, certainly with, uh, with, with Will Anderson, who I mentioned a second ago, and some of the coaches they brought in. Bobby Slowick uh, really, really seems to be – having an impact very soon. Now, we'll see once they get to, to inter-squad practices and, uh, and, and the preseason if it really starts to translate. But D'Amico Ryans was that important. I, I would go so far as to say that D'Amico Ryans' hire was the most important moment in the history of the organization. Uh, oh, more wow. important than anything except for actually getting the team from Bob McNair. You know, once the Oilers left, sore subject, by the way, but, uh, uh, you know, once the Oilers left, uh, getting the organization was the biggest moment, obviously. Since then, probably hiring D'Amico Ryans. And, and the only reason I say that is because it was spiraling downward that bad, and it was that dysfunctional. It was a very, very dysfunctional team. And now, boy, you should see this place. Uh, the city, uh, the team, the energy, the culture, which a lot of people throw around casually, but it was very real here, just mm -hmm. completely different. All right, so now I feel like the biggest hurdle is going to be – starting the season and getting off to a hot start because it can be difficult when everything is new for a new team 
getting off to a hot start because a lot of it is just learning new faces and learning a new playbook and all of this. So how do we think that this season is going to go for the Texans? Because I do think they have some good pieces for the future, but can be hard to start. It is. And you mentioned a hot start. To me, I'll define it a little bit differently. I'm, I'm sure you're talking about getting some wins early. I just think Houston and this organization needs to see some things early. They need to see that mm-hmm. C.J. Stroud is going to be the guy. They mm-hmm. need to see that Damian Pierce is still, you know, a beast in the backfield. They need to see Will Anderson uh, make plays uh, that, that you can kind of project and go, okay, that, guy, that guy's got it. And so, yes, everybody wants to win. I, I would love to see them win. It's good for the city. And, and, and I, I would love for the city to, to have a, a, another, you know, run in the playoffs uh, like the 20, you know, circa 2012 Texans. But I don't think it's, it's the be-all here. Uh, I think because it was so bad, so comical, as I mentioned earlier, we just need as a city and the organization needs to see as an organization something that says, okay, they can get there from here. Is it going to be the one that got away if you don't bet on it? Probably not. I don't think that you'll heavily regret saying, oh, God, I should have bet the house on the preseason NFL game, the Hall of Fame matchup between the Jets and the Browns line here is the Jets favored by a point and a half. Uh, they're minus 125 on the money line. If you like the Browns on the money line, you can get them plus 105. Total of 33 and a half, which seems comically low, but this has been the trend for the Hall of Fame game. If there's one trend you can pick out of this game, it's the fact that the under has been red hot. The under's hit in seven of the last 10 matchups, and in fact, seven of the last 10 games have stayed under that total of 33 points. Since 2014, only two teams have scored more than 20 points themselves. But if you do remember, last year's Hall of Fame game went over uh, mm-hmm. finishing at 27 to 11. So your stone cold lock, at least for me was the under last year in the hall of fame game. And that did not hit. So your girl ain't betting on it this year. Oh, oh Chelsea. Oh, you know what? I don't blame you. I'm not <laughs> on Although if uh, I did, uh, <laughs> if I did, I would go Jets money line. I would go Jets money line. The Browns are not going to start either of their first string or second string quarterbacks, not Deshaun Watson, not Joshua Dobbs. So now you're going to get Kellen Mon, who was a failure with the Vikings. That's harsh. He just didn't make it with the Vikings. Also, you have <laughs> Dorian Thompson Robinson out of UCLA. That was really harsh. Dorian Thompson Robinson out of UCLA, who was great to watch during college. So you've got third and fourth string QBs going for the Brownies. Zach Wilson, you know what I'm banking on here? I'm not banking on Aaron Rodgers. I'm banking on the Aaron Rodgers effect because everything I'm rooting for Zach Wilson. I root for any guy who has cachet with the MILFs of this world because they need love, and Zach Wilson loves himself some MILFs. Everything I've heard is that since Aaron Rodgers has come in and he has been a guy sort of leading Zach Wilson and teaching him how to prepare, teaching him how to be a pro, and everything I read is that it's working. Zach Wilson looks a lot better in practice. Nobody's listening to Zach Wilson now, but if you listen to him, he has matured quite a bit. So I think Zach Wilson, I don't think he's going to show out tonight, but what I do think is we will see improvement, and he's in a comfortable place where the spotlight is not on him to perform. I think because of that, because the Jets naturally have a better defense, that the Jets at minus 125 is to play. I cannot believe I'm trying to handicap this game, but will I play it? No, I will not.